of the Tinubu-led federal government uh, yesterday made desperate efforts to avert the proposed two-day warning strike being organized by the Nigeria Labor Congress, NLC, over the worsening economic situation in the country. Also, the Minister of Labor and Employment, Simon Lalong, yesterday summoned a meeting involving all relevant stakeholders, including the leadership of the NLC, to a negotiation meeting and, of course, appealed to them to shelve the strike in the interest of all Nigerians in order to allow stakeholders to work towards amicable resolution of the contending issues on ground. We call that the NLC after its National Executive Council NEC meeting. On Thursday last week, threatened to embark on a two-day strike, warning strike that is, starting today, September 5th, and tomorrow, September 6th. Now, it's also important to mention that they have the meeting that was called by the Minister of Labor and Employment, a number of the leading NLC officials did not attend the meeting. And part of why they shown the meeting, according to them, was that he had made some quote-unquote threats before the meeting. They said that he had inferred that there would be possibility of likely arrest, that he had made reference to them in some uncomfortable or maybe derogatory words. Yep. And so, as such, they decided not to show up for the meeting. They shunned the meeting, and the reason was because they feared that there would be potential arrest at the meeting. And cool. So now they haven't been able to reach any consensus of any sort. NLC has threatened to go on strike. The union had hinged the proposed action and excruciating suffering by experience by Nigerians following the removal of fuel subsidy. We'll be delving more into this conversation and to give us more updates on the strike action is the Assistant General Secretary, NLC, Chris Onyeka. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning and thank you for having me here. All right. And let's get into the conversation. Let's talk about the meeting that the, um, the Minister of Labor and uh, Employment did call, uh, talking about how, trying to have a meeting with the NLC leaders. We hear that the meeting was shunned and that part of the reason that the NLC gave for shunning the meeting was there were fears of possible arrest. Is this a position you can confirm? Can you give us details or insights into what happened? Uh, the truth is um, that uh, there are processes in, in calling such meetings. And um, you, you used the right word when you said summoned. You know, and when you... When you want to relate or engage with social partners, it has to be on the basis of equality. Now, the basis of equality demands that, um, that you, you do not summon. You do not summon the, part, the partners to a meeting. You invite them to a meeting. And when you invite people to a meeting, then, uh, then it means that what we are going to discuss is going to be based on equality. It's going to be based on the fact that we are going to negotiate on issues and get to a reasonable conclusion. But when you, uh, you summon people to a meeting, uh, then a whole lot of issues begin to arise. What is the motive for, for calling such a meeting? Then is it possible that you have already taken decision before calling us to a meeting so that you will use our presence to, uh, to probably validate whatever it is that you have already decided? And so we felt that that was not a meeting that is supposed to address the issues that we have raised. And uh, we believe also that there, there also may be um, some hidden intentions behind such a hasty uh, meeting. Uh, for Christ's sake, we wrote the Minister of Labor, you know, we copied, we gave them a, a copies of the communique that, uh, that, are, that arose out of the next meeting. Uh, and since then, they didn't do anything. Nothing happened. There was no meeting that was called. There was no intervention. You see, the, 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 one of the duties of the Federal Ministry of Labor is to apprehend, is to apprehend uh, any uh, probably uh, intending or any issue that may lead to industrial disharmony in the nation. It, it is in the public space, the position of the Nigerian Labor Congress, the decision to go on a warning strike, okay, towards the general strike that is planned for, uh, for later this month, was in the public space. And the Federal Ministry of Labor failed in its responsibility to apprehend. Oh, so, sorry, not apprehend sorry can you hold on? You, you said it was in the public space. What do you mean by it was in the public space? The decision to call yeah. the warning strike was in the public space. It was I mean, in the media, it was everywhere. 
and we also communicated officially to the Ministry of Labor. And okay, so and the, 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 the notice that you gave or the request that you said you gave to the Ministry of Labor, uh, do you know what date it was? We had our meeting. We had our, our meetings on um, on the thirty first. We had our meetings on the thirty first of August. That was the next, meeting. and then the very next day, the media the media carried it everywhere. The very next day, which was the first of September, we sent out the communication to the Ministry of Labour. We wrote letters to them, attached the communique, and sent to them. And it was in the public space everywhere. It was in the media. It was. It was in the print media. It was in the electronic media. And um, the Ministry of Labor will not tell anybody that they do not read the newspapers. They will not tell anybody that they do not go to social media. They won't tell anybody that they don't, they don't listen to news. So the news carried it everywhere, and they did not do anything to apprehend it. They waited until the very last. You see, we, are, no, we but, have experience. Uh, so sorry, apologies, uh, I'm, I'm, and I'm sorry that I'm jump, jumping in. You had a meeting on the 31st of August. Yes. Right, you exactly. you're saying that it, it became public, you know, information on the first of September, right? That same day, on the thirty first. Oh, that same day, thirty first of August. You know, today is today is the what fifth of September. Today is it. Yeah. So yes. so basically, about four or five days, you know, after your meeting, um, mm -hmm. what, did did the details of your meeting demand that the NLC converges and an immediate meeting? Or link, or you know, at, at least do something, you know, with, uh, you know, to approach labor. Was there anything like that in the in the details of the meeting? You see, the, the fact is this: that this matter has lingered on from the fifth of June, the fifth day of June. So, it's is is is, a, is, is a, these are issues that have been there for nearly six months, and so they are not new issues. Yeah, and, uh, but they, they, they are not new issues. They are not new issues, yeah. but if you remember, if you remember a few weeks ago, there was a proposed strike that was eventually, yes. you know, oh, shelved. It was put off, you know, when the NLC President Joe Ajero and, of course, Felix Osifo of the TUC met with President, you know, uh, Bola Metinubu. Um, so, so when then was there a new breakdown in, you know, in discussions or in negotiations? Because I'm yeah, sure that at yeah, this yeah. point... I, there's a lot of Nigerians, and if you look at the news this morning, there's already news saying that the TUC is not with the NLC in this strike. It also is saying that Lagos uh, labor, uh, your Lagos workers are not with the NLC in this strike. So I don't think that there's a lot of people who have faith or interest in what the NLC is saying or doing. Uh, you see, uh, those are not issues that, that we're going to discuss here. The fact is this, that uh, there was a, a mass protest, a nationwide mass protest that was called with the intervention of the president who reached an agreement with the president of NLC and, um, and uh, uh, the president of our sister labor center, that he was going to restructure the committee that was set up to address all of these issues so as to make it effective. But the president reneged. OK. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, we, of course, um... You're struggling with that connection there with um, a representative from the Nigeria Labor Congress. The conversations, of course, are centered around the proposed strike by the NLC today and tomorrow, the 5th and 6th of September. And from what he said, they had a meeting on the 31st of August, which is just a couple of days ago. And the uh, Nigerian um, um, Labor, well, okay, I think he's back now. Welcome back. If you can hear us, Mr. Onyeka. I can hear you. All right. So I was ahead. saying that. The president made pledges, and we expect the president to live up to his pledges and refuse to do anything about the pledges he made, about the commitments okay, that he made to Nigerian people and Nigerian workers. What do you expect Nigerians to do? What do you expect Nigerian workers to do? Do you expect us to keep quiet and refuse to do anything? You see, the pressure is on all of us. Nigerian people and Nigerian workers are looking up to the Nigerian Labour Congress to take action, to do something to ameliorate the suffering of the people. All right. And if you don't go, if you go to work every day, you will understand what we're talking about. That it is very difficult for Nigerians to move from point A to point B on a daily basis. Many Nigerians are staying at home because of the suffering that the decisions 
or the policies of the federal government has frustrated a lot of us. And it is it's incumbent on all of us to take action. And we have continued communicating this to the federal government via the different channels. Right. But the refusal of the federal government to do anything. Instead, federal government went ahead to begin to allocate 5 billion naira to the, to the states. All right, Mr. Yika, um, let's talk about what happens next after this two-day strike, today and the 6th. And what happens when the federal Five government... Uploads of, um, Mr. Nika, can you hear me? I'm listening. I'm All right, listening. I want to find out what happens next after this two-day strike. The 5th and the 6th, according to you and according to the NLC, these two days are for the strike. Now, we're hearing reports that if the government doesn't meet your demand, that within 14 to 21 days of today, there'd be another indefinite strike. Is this true? And can you tell us what the next this is are? This is a warning strike. We said it's a two-day warning strike. This two-day warning strike is on two issues. One is the issue of the sufferings that the federal government has refused to do anything about. Two is the second one is the issue of the illegal invasion and occupation of the national of the national headquarters of the National Union of Road Transport Workers. And let me say something because there was an insinuation in your statement that. Uh, Lagos people say they are not joining. That is not true. I receive, I have not slept since uh, since uh, 12 o'clock to make sure that all our affiliates all around the Federation are involved in this strike. Uh, you, you can fly in from Lagos now, let us see. You can fly in from Lagos to any part of the country. The action is total. This is a strike. People are staying at home. Nigerian workers are staying at home and uh, in total obedience to the decision they took. Remember, when we say NLC took a decision, it is not a Adjero or the deputy president that took the decision. It is the state councils, it is the affiliates that took that decision. We are not in the risk. You see, some people do not understand how uh, organized uh, labor works. The people that actually insisted that, or that we take action are people from the states all over Nigeria and the industrial unions all over Nigeria. They were the ones that insisted that action be taken and that something be done. And that is why they said we should give federal government two days warning, uh, 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 warning strike Mr. to Nika. prepare their mind. And I, 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 quite agree. Mr. Nika, I quite agree with you that it's been a really rough time for Nigerians and not a lot of people are able to move from point A to point B. People are struggling to feed. Everyone is feeling it. We are all feeling it. But do you genuinely believe that these strike actions that the NLC is embarking on will yield the results that you desire? Do you believe in the NLC, NLC's ability to make the government undo certain decisions, you know, certain decisions that it's taken to take a different stand? Do you really have faith in the NLC's ability to influence the decisions of the government? Judging by, you know, the, if, if you look at the past few years, would you say that the NLC has been very effective in ensuring that the government change, changes its mind on certain decisions that haven't been beneficial to the people? We have always been very, 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 very um, proactive in taking, uh, in engaging government on most of these issues that we have talked about. If you look around the, the landscape, you will see that most of the major decisions, most of the major uh, um, uh, frameworks that have been put in place, for example, the, uh, the, the um, city, mass transit system that have been put in place, the social housing programs all over the nation. And the, even the, if you remember the proposed bank, you remember most of the things that have been put in place, the social investment programs, were products of negotiations by NLC, by the Nigerian Labor Congress. It is not something that government did on their own, but they were all products of engagements by the Nigerian Labor Congress. And I tell you, when you ask whether, we, whether I have that uh, trust that we're going to do it, we have capacity. We have, we have unquestionable capacity to, make, to get this government to change their mind and do the right thing. It's yep. our responsibility to assist the government to make life better for Nigerians. And that is what we are doing. We have the human capacity. And with the cooperation of Nigerians, people like you in the media, people that are on the street, join, putting hands together, the civil society organizations joining us, we will get government to change their mind, to do the right thing. It is not just an NLC action. It All is right. the action of Nigerians. It's a collective yeah. action. That Ms. Ms. Government change their mind. Because governance is about people. 
It's about the nation. It's about workers. It is not about government. It's about us. And they must listen to our interests, our desires. That is what ought to drive governance policies. Now, Mr. Amerika, th th this is what I was saying earlier. You know, I understand, you know, how it is not the NLC's responsibilities, Nigerians and all of that. But the question I was asking earlier is, do Nigerians have any faith in what the NLC is doing? And, you know, Nigerians, my, colleague, my colleague just Nigerians, asked you, I, I, would, mm -hmm. I would I beg to differ because my colleague just asked you, you know, what has the NLC really done and achieved for Nigerians? And I'm talking about tangible things that you can say that when the NLC went on strike or when the NLC made its demands, the Nigerian government, you know, had to reverse its policy. Petrol price is the highest it has ever been in Nigeria's history. The poverty index in Nigeria today is the worst it has ever been in its history. The level of unemployment has been, is the worst it has ever been. There's a time Asu was on strike for almost a year. I mean, has there been any time that the NLC has taken, you know, these, these type of strikes or protests that the Nigerian government said, okay, we would have to take, you know, you know reverse completely these policies or at least align with Nigerians. Nigerians are suffering way more than they've ever, you know, ever experienced. And the NLC has been present. And this is the question I was asking before. Every single time that the NLC has proposed a strike or, you know, a, a protest or whatever, it all, always happens the same way, that they get into some meeting with the government, some random meeting with the government, and then call off that strike or call off that protest. And everybody just, you know, seems to go, you know, go home to sleep. So why should anybody have faith or interest in this one that the NRC is doing this time? I, when you ask a question, I, if you're a student of history, especially Nigerian history, you will find out that, that uh, at a point, the Eradu administration increased the price of fuel. We engaged that administration, and that administration rolled back, uh, reversed itself, and went back uh, to the original price and, and, and all of those. When you look at currently the issue of the CNG that we're talking about, the CNG is a product of the suggestions of the Nigerian Labour Congress. It is not a product of government suggestion. When you look at the mass transit system, when you look at the issue of investment in, uh, in, in the rail transport system, it, all these are products of negotiations, of engagements by the Nigerian Labour Congress with the government. When you look at the issue of mass housing, provision of federal, federally driven mass housing in all the states of the Federation. They were products of engagement by the Nigerian yeah, Congress. Yeah, I, I, get, I get it. I get it, it but Mr. Yekab. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. You asked a question. You yeah. asked a question. Let me give you examples of our achievements, of what we have done for Nigerian workers and Nigerian people. Okay. All over. Or if you are interested in that. No, so, I am interested, you know, but it's not, it's not, what I'm asking is, what I'm asking because you're talking about social investment and housing, you know, programs. You know, I, I don't know that we can look at statistics and say, oh, millions of Nigerians are benefiting from, from these things. Um, you're talking about, you know, mass, trans, mass transit, you know, um, 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 there are houses and um, um, formations there are houses that have been made. And there, are vehicles, there are houses and there are buses all over the nation. You can see. Those, those, can those see are not, the, but those are not Nigerians and the Nigerian workers' biggest challenges. The houses and buses. And when I said in the last long while, yes, you decided to go back to your last time. Maybe the, I, I, I need to probably look back and see if there was so one I time. So that you will see, you asked the question. You would have allowed me to go through history so that you will see what we have done that probably you never knew it no, was I, as a I, result I, of our engagement. I, I, well, I, if we had time, you probably would be able to go back to that history. But I'm sure that, you know, if you go back in that history, you know, uh, there's not a lot. Um, and another thing is there's also criticism that NLC is choosing to do its strike or carry out its strike action, you know, day before the um, presidential election petitions tribunal gives its ruling. Um, and of course, you know, I've seen comments that have accused the NLC of taking sides with the government to shut down the country before the ruling um, is given tomorrow. What's your quick response to that? No, you, uh, some, uh, some people will accuse us of siding with the government. There's some people will accuse us of siding with the opposition party. When we called for action the first time, they accused us of being Labour Party people, that we are, we are the owners of Labour Party. Some of them accused us of being an evil, driven uh, something. And then uh, now you are accusing us of being on the part of government. We called this action without the knowledge that the uh, PEPT was going to give this ruling tomorrow. And so we, we were there, and we, we do not work with them to know how their timing is. And so we have taken time 
because we are looking at issues that affect workers and affect Nigerians. And so we are not interested in politics, in that type of politics. We are interested in addressing the sufferings of Nigerian people. And that is what concerns us. That's our, our focus. Any other person can play their politics. We are not interested in all of those. We are only interested in making sure that government listens to the people, that government listens to the workers. That is our only interest. So people will always have something to say. You know, people will always have something to say, either on the side of government or on the side of uh, some mischievous elements who are also working with the government. It they is are only looking for something to say, that's all. It's our hope that, you know, this two-day warning strike will be able to get the impact that it should get. Nigerians are really suffering. Like my colleague said, this is the worst it's ever been in the country. And we just need to have a break. Nigerians really need to breathe. And we hope that you know, there'd be some favorable outcome from this warning strike. Thank you so much for your time with us, Mr. Oneka. We do wish you a wonderful rest of the day, even though we know your day is going to be busy. Thank you so much, and I pray and ask all of us to join hands together so that we can make government to come back to the negotiation table so that we can ameliorate this suffering that all of us are into. Thank you so much for having me, and God bless you. Thank you very much. Right.